1931, Charlie Luciano orchestrated the murder of crime boss Salvatore Maranzano, allegedly because he found out that Maranzano was planning to have him killed. Most sources indicate that Luciano was tipped off about Maranzano's plot by Tommy Lucchese. However, an FBI file shows there was perhaps another mobster who alerted Luciano to the danger he was in. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at who tipped off Charlie Luciano about Maranzano's plans to have him killed. After the murder of Joe the Boss Masseria in April 1931, Salvatore Maranzano became boss of bosses in the American Mafia. He is the last Cosa Nostra boss to officially have this title, despite this phrase being connected with numerous mobsters in the media since. According to various sources, Maranzano had drawn up a list of names of mobsters he wanted killed. One name on this list was Charlie Luciano. Selwyn Rob's acclaimed book Five Families states, From his trusted crony, Tommy Three Finger Brown Lucchese, Luciano got wind of more alarming news. The duplicitous Lucchese had cozied up to Maranzano and his top lieutenants and learned that Maranzano had marked Luciano for a machine gun assassination by the Irish cutthroat Vincent Mad Dog Cole. However, an FBI file containing information from a source labelled NYT2 provides another account of how Luciano learned that he was marked for death. The file reads, Chico Scalisi had been given command by Maranzano of the most powerful Borgata in New York in his time, that of the deceased Diacula on condition that he eliminate Vincenzo Mangano. Maranzano rented a large apartment at 42nd Street behind the Hotel Commodore, overlooking the railroad station, staffed with guards. Here, he prepared a list of some 60 individuals who had impeded him and condemned them to death. Lucky Luciano was on this list. Chico Scalisi, referenced in this file, is Frank Cheech Scalise. As alluded to in the document, in 1930, Frank Scalise had taken over what is now known as the Gambino family after the murders of the previous boss, Al Mineo, and his underboss, Steve Ferrigno. Mineo had himself become boss after the murder of Salvatore Toto Diacula. After Joe the Boss Masseria was killed, Maranzano reconfirmed Scalise's status as boss of the former Diacula group when he organised the five families. The FBI file states that Maranzano had requested that Scalise murder Vincent Mangano, who was a powerful mobster in Brooklyn. However, Scalise didn't carry out Maranzano's demands. As the excellent book The Mob and the City by C. Alexander Hortis states, Then, Scalise delayed the hit. Growing impatient, Maranzano demanded to know why Mangano was still alive. Scalise tried to explain that he was unable to develop any pretext to kill Mangano in order to justify his action with his countrymen. The boss of bosses was extremely unhappy with Scalise. The FBI file continues. Scalise, under suspicion by Maranzano for failure to kill Mangano, was asked to keep an appointment with Maranzano in Buffalo. En route by train, Scalise suspected two individuals of following him and managed to elude their surveillance, returning to New York immediately. There, he confided all to Joe Biondo, who called Vincenzo Mangano, Lucky Luciano and Al Capone, who began planning to eliminate Maranzano. From the file, we can see that it was Frank Scalise who, fearing for his life after failing to murder Vincent Mangano, contacted Joe Biondo, who was a close friend of Luciano's, and told him about Maranzano's murder plot. Biondo then contacted Vincent Mangano, Luciano and Al Capone to tip them off that their names were on Maranzano's hit list. This version doesn't mean that Lucchese didn't provide Luciano with similar information, but that Frank Scalise's involvement is an interesting piece of mob history that is rarely discussed. Interestingly, on the 4th of July 1931, in a police raid at a hotel in Cleveland, Ohio, 
Tommy Lucchese, Joe Biondo and Charlie Luciano were arrested for vagrancy after watching the heavyweight title fight between Max Schmeling and Young Stribling. It can be speculated that Biondo and Lucchese were discussing with Luciano Maranzano's plans to have him killed. As we know, in September 1931, Maranzano was murdered by a group of Jewish hitmen disguised as law enforcement officers or IRS agents depending on the source you read. The group of killers led by Samuel Red Levine and included Abe Bo Weinberg carried out the murder at Luciano's and Meyer Lansky's behest. As is commonly stated, it was Tommy Lucchese along with Tom Gagliano who were present at the office of Maranzano when the hit team arrived and then subtly pointed out Maranzano to the Jewish killers. Samuel Red Levine would later state that Maranzano was a tough G who put up a real fight, which is why they ended up shooting him after stabbing him several times. In this 1931 coroner's sketch of Maranzano, you can see the injuries that he sustained during his murder. This coroner's sketch may provide us with a rare glimpse of what Maranzano's face looked like. After Maranzano was killed, Charlie Luciano had to explain why he ordered the hit, and Frank Scalise was called upon to provide supporting information, as this FBI file shows. The Castello Marese asked for a truce, asking why Maranzano was killed. A general assembly was called in Chicago and Chico Scalisi revealed Maranzano's actions and crimes during his short dictatorship. However, despite tipping off Luciano and the others about Maranzano's plans, and also supporting their actions in front of the General Assembly in Chicago, Frank Scalise was removed from his position as boss and replaced with Vincent Mangano. Years later, Frank Scalise would visit the deported Luciano in Italy when on holiday, as seen in this photo, perhaps indicating that Frank Scalise bore no grudge against Luciano after his demotion. It would take 20 years for Frank Scalise to return to the hierarchy of the family when he became Alba Anastasia's underboss in the 1950s. It can be speculated that Luciano and his followers planned to kill Maranzano at some point anyway, but after being provided the information from Frank Scalise that they had been marked for death, they decided to act sooner and could then cite self-defense. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.